Oh, don't, 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 don't. Now that is freaking movie editing. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Editing Science where we break down fantastic editing, what makes a video special, we throw on the dad hat, we get out the nerdy vibes, and we break it down fantastic editing from start to finish. This week we are diving into none other than Ryan Trahan's My Last Video video. <laughs> this video is a unit of a video. The editing is on point. The filmmaking is top notch. It's so cinematic in the way that it is executed. And so much of that is coming through the edit. But before we look through the actual video itself, let's get out those nerdy editing dad stats. To kick things off, it wouldn't be an editing science video if we didn't get out the auto scene cut detection tool in DaVinci Resolve to see how many cuts this video had. And using that tool, we discovered there was 114 cuts. The video is five minutes and 49 seconds long, or roughly 349 seconds. A little bit of napkin division math, and we're getting a cut roughly every 3.06 seconds. Next on the docket, what is the ratio of tight, medium, and wide shots chosen in this edit? For the number of tights, we got 25. For the number of mediums, we got 34. And for the number of wides, we got 32. And on this particular statistic, I actually stopped looking at tights, mediums, and wides once he pulled up the phone and did the actual ad read at the end so I'm just talking about the cinematic section of this video cinematic. by the way this is telling me we have a fantastic mix of detail shots wide landscape inducing shots bringing us into the environment as well as plenty of nice medium shots of Ryan himself we're not getting too stuck on one type of shot which again keeps our audience engaged that that's good filmmaking next statistic not that it particularly matters towards the edit but it's just fun there were 391 spoken words in this video and 150 words if you just include the cinematic part and the next stat is the number of songs used in this edit now this one was a little tricky I think there was a couple times where we're probably using some stems, which again is just different pieces of a song. I think I counted six different songs in just the cinematic portion. If I'm getting the first few uses of the first song mixed up, it could range from anywhere to seven or eight songs. Again, I think it's the same one, just different parts chopped up from what I can tell. And the last part of this statistics section is looking at the waveform, and right away we are seeing everything I love to see in a waveform. Lots of peaks, lots of valleys. We are going to have so many moments in this video where we are bringing it down, we are focused, we are, you know, pulling interest to calm moments, and then we are escalating to absolutely energy-filled moments. I can just tell right away from this waveform, we are seeing some really special contrast editing. All right, guys, but without further ado, let's kick off this video and let's break down some of these fantastic editing choices. Doubt anyone's even gonna watch this video. <laughs> Okay, right out of the gates, I'm, again, this is kind of the filmmaking of it, but it is the editing as well. The fact that we start with the classic Ryan Trahan, you know, sh iPhone shot is just so great to then go to this flipping through the air shot, which again is just the sound design there. I'm sure a lot of that wind noise was added in post. Maybe he actually threw his phone, I don't know, but it was just really intentional with the spinning. It makes me think that it was done in post, which again, sound design in this video is immaculate. We're gonna talk about that a lot, but that was so clever to do that. And then to have that big old hit, that thunderous thoof, as the phone hits the sand. So that thud was a great choice, but let's talk about the editing choice here. We've got that standard 16 by nine phone aspect ratio, selfie camera, Ryan loves to do it. And as soon as the phone hits and we get that high impact moment, we are in two, three, five to one aspect ratio, which again, just signals right away in our brains as a viewer, this is a movie. This was a great choice to immediately, as an editor say, audience, wake up. We're in a movie. Let's see. I'm gonna try to not beat this dead horse way too much, but those footsteps gotta be sound design in post. Perfectly done, lined up right with his steps. Great choice on the volume. This opening shot is special and I love it so much. So what do I love about it? I love that we cut to the door and we let the door breathe for, let's see here, how many frames? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 frames. We almost let this just static door shot sit 
for borderline a whole second of this cinematic edit. And you're probably going, Jake, why is this important? This is important because the action of this shot is the door flying open and Ryan entering. And typically in this video, which we'll talk about, he, the editor of this, is showing the action, which is so important in editing. You want to show the action. You don't want stuff on the tail ends of clips stay in the edit. You want to make sure that the action, the intention of each shot is demonstrated. And I love that in this shot, we actually left a little bit of anticipation, a little bit of a moment before the action of him slamming through the door, which again, just builds that contrast in a world full of rules and trying to, you know, do action-based editing. This breaks that rule for a very specific purpose and we have to give it a thumbs up. Song selection, perfect right here. This is another great example. The whole sequence of him digging through the house is showing the action. Every drawer being opened, that is what is going on in this edit. Action, action, action of him popping up, grabbing that, action of him looking in there fantastic editing it's so it's so good music cuts right there perfect and then this comes back in this is the part that i'm not sure this sounds like a different song but it might be the same one because it's still got that kind of country feel to it i think it might be different but man what a great use of already switching the song because we're really building the suspense with that little da, 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 da. it's so so who wrote this? Brilliant use of contrast editing. We cut the music to really hit this humor moment of Ryan saying, who wrote this? It's genius. It's perfect. It's so well done. Oh, that's so good too, dude. That's so good. We hear the knock on the door. Song comes back in with a little did -did -did -did, which I think is like kind of like a violin fiddle or something, whatever to kind of build that suspense again. And then we have this door push in shot with this really wispy ethereal sound design to just have this <gasps> which is so good, so good. Sounds like ghosts, which we love. This is another one of those moments where because it's a tight shot, they may have gotten the audio of him licking his lips. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they got that in camera. Okay. This is a really, really cool sequence. The song comes in and we're kind of editing to the beat, right? The door opens, song starts, we're sort of editing to the beat. Now I like that we don't abuse it. There's several shots in here before this shot of looking back up at Ryan where we're not editing on the beat. We're not afraid to show the action, to not totally give our audience that dopamine hit of hitting on the beat, but then when we pan back here to really have this Wes Anderson looking hero shot, we give the audience their dopamine, that rush of just like, yes, it fell right on the beat, that was perfect, kind of breaking that cadence and then doing it at a pivotal moment. And then again, it works just great as we cut out. It's, it's good stuff here. <laughs> I love this contrast editing so much. We come back in with all this high energy. He's riding on the horse. And then it just cuts to just this totally silent cricket night, fire, Ryan doing his hands. Ah, I just, again, it, it, it kind of brings in this just sort of fever dream humor thing that they're going for. And the editing is so well aligned with that. Comes back in. Okay, this is a, I mean, this is really, really tight editing, but the fact that we have the dirt kicking out, which again, it's like just fantastic movie making and perfectly executed, but the fact that we've got the dust filling the frame and then perfectly using that as a transition in the edit is just chef's kiss. So Great sound design here. Very spooky, very ethereal. Got some really nice cello coming in, which I love. I'm such a sucker for. Love it. It's a freaking movie. The thunder, lightning crack, just and then the riser into the next song. It is just a movie. This song is such a good choice for this scene. The with the hits. Big hits. I'm such a sucker for freaking orchestra drums. So good. This is such a tiny detail, but 
man, it makes all the world of the difference. Pay really close attention to as Haley delivers her line and then kind of rustles the newspaper and both sound design on the transition, but also the the continuity of the shot selection in post to make sure that these shots lined up as good as they did. Watch this. It's it's so good. Maybe that'll wake him up. God, it's so good. Love a high-pitched ring. Love a high-pitched ring. Such a good choice there. <clears throat> this song's a vibe. I'm getting pumped again. Yeah. We had a dip. We're in a valley. We're climbing. We're climbing another peak. We're getting up to another mountain. Oh, we're not even driving. <laughs> yes, the song's getting us pumped. Punchline. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with this video, which I think is really interesting, is the choice of those aspect ratio bars to squeeze in. I think there's a lot of different ways to interpret this. What I'm seeing here as a fellow editor was a really clever choice. And at first it kind of turned me off because it was kind of like, what are we doing here? But I honestly think that we're just taking the aspect ratio, which is that cinematic aspect ratio, and we're just closing in and drawing focus to Ryan as he pulls up the phone, we're just making it be even more important what is about to happen. And I think a little bit subconsciously, we're thinking maybe it's just going to close completely, like fade to black. I think almost subconsciously, we're thinking, oh, is it just gonna keep closing? And maybe we get like a end screen, some text, something like that. Maybe, maybe that was the intention. That's kind of what I was feeling as I was watching this, again, as a fellow editor. But then I kind of like that, again, that draws in the focus and then we kind of subvert that expectation. We don't close and we just cut to Ryan on the phone, which again, was very much highlighted by what was done here. And then, you know, just kind of takes us there. So if you guys have any other ideas, comment down below. I'd love to hear. Ryan, I don't usually care about YouTuber products, but I love sour candy. So I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to figure out how to get my hands on this because I am a sour candy boy. And the guys that actually shot and edited this have their own channel called Sticks. They are awesome. They are such cool creators and what a fantastic job you guys did. So definitely show some love down in the comments. Uh, give me some of your thoughts that you guys had about this edit. I think it is truly awesome. It's definitely one to sit down, write some notes on and get nerdy with. But with that guys, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit like and make sure to subscribe so that you can be here for the next time we do another editing science episode. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.